Hi, Leslie. How are you? Hi. How you doing? Doing. Uh, as in bad day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Well, it looks like it's nice and sunny wherever you are. So what's been going on? Um, it's just so I'm in a journey to tour five. It's just going through uh, the separation and child custody battle. It's, it's completely draining emotionally and financially. Oh. So. Oh, so I, 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 I totally understand that. I also went through a divorce many years ago when my children were young. And I mm-hmm. know how challenging that can be from not only being a part of that, but also counseling people over the years who are going through those challenges. It is one of the most challenging times of your life. And uh, it's very emotional. There's no doubt. I understand. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, ask how many children do you have? I have three children. Through- I have while three going children. through the divorce? Yeah, I'm sorry? While you were going through the divorce at that time? Yes, I had three children at the time that I was going through the divorce. Uh, they were five and seven because I have twins. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that my youngest are almost 20, next month they'll be 20. So mm-hmm. it was quite a while ago, but it was it certainly uh, uh, it was very challenging. And I worked full time and I worked full time back then. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm no stranger to those experiences. You know, I went through the divorce process. Uh, I've counseled people who've gone through the divorce process and dealing with the kids and the financial fallout from that process. So mm-hmm. it's, it's overwhelming. What I can tell you is that there is a light on the other side of this tunnel, that it feels like it's not going to end, that it's draining. It keeps you up at night. How are mm-hmm. you going to manage? But when the process is over, it's almost like it was a big storm and the clouds separate and the sun comes out and you have more freedom and more control and you, Mm -hmm. you know, listen, life has its ups and downs and there's challenges, but this is the, one of the biggest challenges is to separate and divorce from, from a spouse. Right. Right. Yeah. So right now my biggest challenge is, um, childcare, you know, after, um, the separation. Um, his mom used to watch my child when I go to work because I work full time too. Uh huh. And and my work is also a shift work because sometimes I work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So it's kind of hard not to see your child. And um, so that's one of my challenge right now. And uh, childcare and also, yeah, <laughs> that's my challenge right now. So yeah. Yeah, childcare is a challenge. You know, I had the three kids and um, mm-hmm. I didn't have any family help. Um, so, um, the children's father didn't live close by and he worked also, and he wasn't really willing to, 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 to babysit for them. So I was responsible for finding and hiring childcare. Um, mm-hmm. I ultimately had to hire childcare, you know, because even though my children were in school, I worked full time and I needed to be able to have childcare before work, after work. Um, so, you know, my job isn't net always nine to five because sometimes there's events and things that I'm involved with that are outside those regular business hours. So, um, it's it, it, childcare, raising kids. I, I'm going to have to say it, childcare is, is one of the most challenging parts of, of child care, of raising children, is mm-hmm. finding good childcare. And, um, it's always changing. Even as the kids change, their ages change, their needs change. Mm-hmm. And it's expensive. Let's let's be yeah. let's be honest. Childcare is super expensive. I mean, those babysitting bills are really high, and that mm-hmm. and, and you know it's a that becomes a priority expense. So when right. you are looking for childcare, you can't say that you'll pay less. It's not like you could find a discount. You have to pay right. the going rate, right? Mm-hmm. So you, yeah. you have to pay the going rate, and then by doing that, you it, it's a big part of your budget. You have one mm-hmm. child, but when you have multiple children, it's even more expensive. And mm-hmm. honestly, even as the children age and they get to 14, 15, 16, they can't be left alone for hours on yeah. end because teenagers get in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, That's they need true. structure and supervision. So, you know, it, and it's uh, it's expensive. It's, it's and it's uh, and I feel your pain that way. I, I really I went through it for many, 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 many years, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's been tough. So that's yeah, and also um the and and the of you know having a child back and forth for the first time, 
And, you know, she was confused and she doesn't know where to go. And yeah, so she's young. I think that's tough on her. She's two years old, but yeah, that's you know, why I, she's, yeah, that's why she's confused and she's not sure. I, that happens with young, very young children. Mm-hmm. So that, that's, the, that's what's going on in my life right now. Yeah. So. I oh I know that I know that must be hard and she's a baby still so mm-hmm. to you know to not be with her as a baby so it's, it gets a little bit easier I'm gonna say when they get older and they because then you can communicate with them and they and when they're with their other parent you can still communicate with them but when they're two years old you don't know what's going on you can't communicate and she's a baby and and you want to be able to be with her and mm-hmm. and provide the consistency and stability so. You know, there'll be consistency and stability and she'll learn this new routine, you know, as challenging as it is for her too. you know, listen, two happy parents and two stable environments is better than one environment that's not stable and not happy. Mm-hmm. That's true. So I, I only used to try to keep that in the, in the in my mind that if I could create a happy home and create stability for my children while they're with me, that that is going to be impressionable on them as they grow. Mm-hmm. That's true. So, you know, since I'm going through a separation, I might have to sell the house soon. I've only been to on a, uh, live in the house for three years. Do you know if, if their capital gain will charge you for that if you sell the house with profit? So that's a that's a tax question. And, and oh. if you stay married um, from a federal perspective, there's a there's a dollar amount. So if you were to sell the house before you're officially divorced and you file married filing Jointly, you will be able to take advantage of a joint uh, amount. But do you really expect to make a lot of money in just three years? No, we're, we're not married. The house is actually under my name. The house is in your name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, all right. But, to, yeah. But do you expect to actually make a profit? Yeah, I, I really don't know. <laughs> right. But with the with, with the area that I'm living, it's, it's actually uh, a desirable area, so I'm, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Okay, well, if you put any monies into the house, you can retain those receipts and you can use those receipts to offset that, but you'll have an exemption. So mm-hmm. um, so it's better to, once you know what you're going to sell the house for at that time, you can talk to your tax preparer about how to, me- how to deal with that if it comes up at all. But it is a good question. Another thing, how, how do you save up uh, money for a child uh, education? Ah, excellent question. How to save money for your child's education. So there's a number of ways. One, you can start a 529 plan, if you like, and where you set that up and you can contribute um, dollars to that. You can do it right out of your paycheck, too. Uh, that's one way. Uh, you can also contribute monies from relatives to that plan. You can contribute money like birthday money that she gets. That's one way. Another way, and and there are times if you don't have the money, you don't have to be contributing to it. Um, the other thing is depending on your state, like um, I, depending on the state, for example, Florida has a Florida prepay where you can pay ahead for the child's education, and it's and by the time they go to school, it's paid off. So Texas may have that for the state schools. So if she ends up going to a state program, she would the education would essentially be already paid for. So you pay into that um, prepay program. So that's mm-hmm. a second way to do that. I mean, you could start a conventional savings account where you're depositing money into a savings account, but you would want to look for a high yield savings account so that you're gaining the most possible mm-hmm. interest on it. But the 529 plan is a better option than just a traditional savings plan because you can use that not only for her, but if she ends up not going to college for whatever reason or doesn't use the whole amount and she has children, you can actually use it for grandchildren. Um, so, you you know, it doesn't have an expiration, but there are some tax benefits to the 529 plan. So that's definitely something to consider. Okay. But the 529 plan, you can only use it for college expenses. Is that correct? No, no. You can use it for education expenses. I believe you, you can have you can use it for um, um, uh, secondary education as well and graduate school. So there's no there's uh, they're, they're limited. There are not as many restrictions on the 529 plan at, at anymore. OK, because what happens if, if your child doesn't want to go to school and they want to do, for example, business instead of school? I mean, don't, don't can, they have other plans? 
So you you can't. So that money has to be withdrawn for the purposes of um, education. So if your child ultimately doesn't want to go to school and you try to withdraw the money for mm-hmm. a non-education, you'll be taxed on it. Okay. Okay. So it right. Just so you has- don't have that flexibility if your child ultimately decides not to go on to uh, a you know uh, a college education. Okay. And do you know how they tax? Is it just like regular income tax or just? It would be tax as income tax because it pre- goes in okay. as pre-tax dollars. Okay. Okay. I see. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I uh, guess I can look more into it. See yeah. how, how that one work. Yeah, because I heard there's other where they don't do 529. They do the UTM or something like that. But I'm not sure. I have to oh, is that it. Texas? Uh, no, it's not Texas. I forgot what it's called. I had to look into that. Okay. Well, um, I definitely think it's worth looking into, mm-hmm. um, you know, to see whether Texas has, let's look it up right now. Let's just see if Texas has a, a prepay, right? Texas mm-hmm. college prepay. I'm just, we'll just use this for an example because mm-hmm. Texas Texas Tuition Promise Fund is the state section 529 prepaid tuition. So the Texas Tuition Promise Fund allows you to look, allows you to lock in current undergraduate tuition rates and school-wide required fees at Texas public colleges and universities, excluding medical and dental institutions. You can enroll in the plan anytime between September and February 28th. Enrollment for children younger than one year old extends through July 31st. The Texas Tuition Promise Fund, the plan is the state section 529 prepaid tuition plan. So we'll use your state as an example. So Mm -hmm. Texas has what looks like a great program. I mean, I'm just reading the homepage of Mm -hmm. it, but I would definitely go to Texas Tuition Promise Fund, read a little bit more about it and find out whether it is an option for you. Matching scholarships and tuition grants. You know, it might be something that is uh, I'm not familiar with this particular program in Texas because I'm not from Texas. But again, I was familiar with one from Florida. So this Mm -hmm. is an opportunity that you might want to look into and and be able to utilize. I'm sure there's some, um, you know, yeah, there's all kinds of different links here. So definitely check that out. And uh, I'm glad we looked that up because that's definitely an option. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely go um, after this. I'll definitely go look at, look into it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you do for work? I'm actually a uh, pharmacist. I'm right now. I'm on a disability leave, and but uh-huh. I'll go back to work on August first. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you went to so you went to pharmacy um, pharmacy school. Yes, I went, <laughs> I went to a private uh, pharmacy school in Denver, Colorado which uh-huh. is not a smart choice because private school is so expensive. <laughs> uh-huh. So I have a, a huge low of debt when I came out. It was, um, I think, around $280,000. Wow, interest, okay, that is a lot. Were interest, those federal yeah. and private loans? Mm-hmm, yes. And are they current, or where are you at with that? So uh, the interest is go up to 300000 but I'm actually, I am just paid off uh, on May before this whole separation happened. So I You just paid, paid it off. all off? Yes. You paid off the 300000 Yes. Oh, my God. I, I'm so yes. excited. That, congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. It's wow, a long journey. that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, wow. You should be so proud of yourself. Yes, I'm, I'm glad I did because right now you I'm just You are like a, a shining finance. star. <laughs> you, you paid off 300000 in student loan. Good for you. Thank Good you. Good for you. Congratulations. That Thank is you. that is a huge accomplishment, and you should be super proud of yourself. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's wow. been a long journey. I pay off. So. <laughs> yeah, good for you. That's mm-hmm. fabulous. I'm super happy for you. Yeah. So now all I have to do is just get get over this big hump, and then you know, you start will. Saving. Oh, you will. You'll get over it. You'll definitely get yeah. over it. Yeah. So that's that's where I am right now. So. Just trying to. You're gonna yeah. get there. Don't worry about it. You know, life has these ups and downs. But you know, on the, the, you know, I'm a very big believer on one side is negative and the other side. You know, what what happens? The negative and the struggles 
is I always look at it like, okay, so if I'm going through a challenging time, I say, why is this happening? There must be something great going to happen on the other mm -hmm. side of this challenge. So I try to look at it like it's an opportunity to embrace a challenge because when the next good thing happens, I'll be able to appreciate it even more. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So I, I remain very positive and optimistic. That's good. It's always good to be positive, optimistic. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, what else is going on? You guys, uh, um, you're, you've been quarantining there? Yeah, yeah just uh, quarantine and um, um, battling with cancer, but I'm done with radiation. I'm done. I'm through the hard part of the cancer. So right now it's just maintaining therapy. So that's what I'm doing right now. Breast cancer. So. Oh, OK. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to hear that you're done with the radiation process mm -hmm. and then and hopefully they caught that early. And, you know, there's a lot of success. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. This is so. why it's important that you you know this. I don't have to tell you limit the stress in your life and try to, you know, try to compartmentalize a little bit about what's going on so that you can feed positive things into your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, so I, I'm sure everything's going to be good. I'm so happy that you're finished with your treatment and um, and you can you have a little bit of time before you go back to work. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So um, another thing is, how do you budget grocery with three kids? Because that's yeah. kind of, I'm sure that's kind of hard. <laughs> so so anything with three kids, it tends to be a challenge. I'll be honest with you. So the so with but so with groceries. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big believer, um, of eating at home. So mm -hmm. I, when my kids were young, you know, we would maybe order out maybe once a week because I always found that when I order out the meal, it cost me for that one meal, what my entire, almost what my entire food bill could be. Yeah. So I was, I used to structure it with the kids that, you know, we can have a special meal out, but the rest of it is all cooked and home cooked food. So even like if I took them to the zoo, I would still bring lunch. You know, if we mm -hmm. went, you know, if we went someplace, I would still bring it so I didn't have to pay for it. So I can enjoy some of those extracurricular activities without having to worry about costs, additional costs like for food. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I was work, you know, I was working when they were little, so I didn't really have the time to um, go figure out you know, where am I going to say, and Amazon didn't exist when my kids were very little. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would go to the local supermarket and look for things that were on sale and, you know, and cook food and, mm -hmm. you know, reheat leftovers and try to be economical about what, you know, what I was cooking and doing for them. So mm -hmm. I also, again, didn't, I, I didn't feed the kids like fast food and stuff like that, like, mm -hmm. because I still felt that that was a meal out. And I would have rather cooked or done something. So budgeting for groceries, you have to figure out what is it that you could afford? Okay, so if the three kids is a lot, so you need a couple hundred dollars a week in food mm -hmm. bills. So mm -hmm. with that, let's say your budget is $200 a week for food bills. So, you know, I would be super careful about what I'm purchasing and try to add it up in my mind as I'm there. And one of the ways to avoid overspending is not taking the children with you. So if you take the children with you, then they want this and they want that. And can we buy mm -hmm. this and can we buy that? And they throw things in the cart. So one of the best ways is to have a list is mm -hmm. to go without the children and to try to get in and out without getting distracted, because that's where, um, you know, things get more challenging and try to find foods that are not as perishable. So they don't go mm -hmm. bad very quickly. If the kids decide they don't want to eat that, I mm -hmm. would buy a little bit more in bulk. So, you know, going to some of the bigger stores where I could buy things in bulk that would last a longer period of time, snacks and other things like that. So I wasn't always going to the supermarket all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you know, that's how I managed with it. And I made it. Oh, that's good. That's good. But that's really the best way to do it. Have a list. Um, if you only have one child, let's say, but you have a neighbor with three mm -hmm. children, you could also go in with your neighbor 
if they're going to go shop at a Costco or a BJ's or a large big box store, you mm-hmm. could, you could, and you don't need such volume, but you want to take advantage of the cost savings. You could go in together and split up the items that you're, that mm-hmm. you, you purchase as a group, which is a nice mm-hmm. way to do that. That's, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. Yeah. Okay. I'm big on sharing. So like, <laughs> you know, well, what also ends up as I also didn't overbuy a particular food. So let's say the kids like macaroni and cheese mm-hmm. and you have a, and you buy box macaroni and cheese, whatever brand it is, you can mm-hmm. serve that for three months straight. And then one day they're going to decide that they don't eat that anymore. And then you're going to have 50 boxes of right. macaroni and cheese because that's all your kid wanted to eat. So I tried to get away from storing food like that because I learned my lesson that there comes a point when the kids actually get tired of eating one food. And then mm-hmm. they're like, I, mom, you know, I don't eat that anymore. And I, and I was like, oh, okay, so now I'm stuck with all this food. What do I do with it? So I could trade it with some of what things my friends had, because you can't really necessarily return it. So I would mm-hmm. just trade things for other people. Like if my friend's kids liked it, you know, there's lots of ways to do that. Okay. You know, and again, the mm-hmm. goal is to try to keep your cost down. So right, if you right. buy a lot of one item and then you're not using that item anymore, you wasted the money on buying it. So mm-hmm. you want to buy enough for a reasonable amount of time that fits within your budget and trying to be very creative about what you're buying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I never thought of that, uh, sharing food with your neighbor and um, not taking it well. Right now, we're not going, we're, we're doing grocery online because they're COVID, but not right. taking your kid. Yeah. As she grow older, she will want to get stuff. Oh, she <laughs> will. Stuff, yeah. it's all, I want this and I want that and I want this and mm-hmm. can I have that? And then they walk around with it and they want it. So why take them with you, you know, to buy, buy food like that? Now, listen, mm-hmm. I understand from a, a babysitting perspective, sometimes you don't have a choice to leave them. You have to take them with you for errands. I mm-hmm. get it. But sometimes I would say, okay, so we're going to go to the food store now. You can pick one thing that you want Mm -hmm. so that you can limit and and manage your expectations. And that's a good way to limit the amount of money that you spend when you take the children out anywhere. This is what you can have. You can you can pick your one item and you pick what you want and your brother or your sister picks what they want or your one child is with you, picks what they want. And this way, there's no like, oh, I want this. And now I want this. They mm-hmm. know going in that there's that expectation. So and you have now limited your financial exposure. Right. OK, that's right. Like she's a, only good, two. But yeah. as she gets a little bit older, she's going to see things and be like, I want that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's good advice. I'll keep that in mind when she grow a little older, because right now she doesn't know what's going on. But she, nope, I she have a feeling that she will. She's right now. <laughs> she is the bestest little baby because you could just basically feed her what you want and you know no she's a picky eater is she (laughs) my kids were not picky eaters so when they were little like two years old if I went out for dinner I didn't I never ordered them this is another cost savings I never ordered my children children's meals so I would order a meal for myself and then Mm -hmm. I would take she's you know my at two years old she's not eating a whole meal so mm-hmm. I would take a piece of food from myself and a piece of food from her father and we would give her some of our food. So I didn't order a separate meal. And by doing that, one, we saved mo- a little bit of money. And mm-hmm. two, we also taught her to eat more um, mature foods. So right. we didn't order off the children's menu where there was spaghetti or what at pizza. That mm-hmm. kind. Of, she was eating salmon. She was eating steak. She was mm-hmm. eating, you know, um, vegetables. We're eating it, so she ate it. And so as a result, like my oldest daughter, it has a has a really sophisticated palate. And even as a child, she would mm-hmm. never eat off the children's menu. She would look at it like, you got to be kidding me. So <laughs> it's, it's a good way to teach the children, you know, um, uh, again, it teach them about different foods and they see mm-hmm. you eating it. So um, so I feel strongly about about that. I feel like it worked for me. Uh, and again, I didn't want to spend the money on food because if what if she didn't want to eat it? What if at right. three, four years old, like I bought her a kid's meal, whatever it is, even if it's ten dollars, and she's like, I'm not, I don't want to eat it. I don't, whatever mm-hmm. it is, and then I wasted ten dollars. So mm-hmm. my food, I I didn't mind sharing portions of my food with my child. 
Mm-hmm. And that was another way to, to that we save money, you know, when we were going out or, or doing other things. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good advice because uh, there are ones that we did take her out and she, we ordered kid meal because she didn't eat the whole thing. So it's going to waste. Right, so, that's it. Yeah. That's it. It's in, it goes in the garbage. She's not going to eat it. Mm-hmm. But if you give her little pieces of whatever you're eating, then mm-hmm. if she doesn't finish it, you eat it. You know, you it's your food. Right. Mm-hmm. And then she, you can show them, like, and that's a good way to also, on a side note, teaching them about different types of foods. So, uh, you know, they're not just eating children's foods that are, you know, mm-hmm. basic basic kid foods. Yeah, that's true. Try things to see if I have anything else. Yeah. So, so... Um, is she going to go to pre-K soon? So she's two. Um, I have to look around, see if there's any pre-K program. Um, the dad's a little bit overprotective. They, they, she, he doesn't want her to be, um, I guess he's over with the coronavirus going on. He just don't want her to be in the daycare, you know, stuff like that. Like that, I totally understand. Yeah. But by the time she's, th- hopefully, God willing, you know, that mm-hmm. by the time she is, um, by the time she is three, three and a half, mm-hmm. we'll be past this issue. And she'll be mm-hmm. able to go to a, a school program, um, mm-hmm. you know, where she can go to school even part-time um, I, I like those programs because I think they're good socialization for the kids. Um, and there mm-hmm. are some programs, depending on where you live, through your town, that are very, very cost effective. Those pre-K okay. and nursery school can be expensive, um, but there are some programs locally uh, that may be less expensive. Um, but an opportunity for her to socialize and an opportunity for her to, to learn and start you know, her, her early education. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then my mom also a pre uh, pre K teacher, so she can teach her too. So oh, she watch her. Yeah. oh, you have like a whole built in system there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yep, that's that's where I am. I can't think of any uh, question that I have. So everything else is under control, and you know, did you, um, did you file I, for divorce? Where Where are you at with that? Well, actually, we 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 were never married. So oh. we're just separating. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, we're um, right now I got temporary um, primary of my child. It's oh, just fabulous. temporary order. Mm-hmm. So right now we're in the process of, um, in, you know, finish the custody bow to the end, to the finalize. It got, it got a little complicated because the person I'm with is, is um, I really don't like to label people, but he have a lot of narcissistic trait. <laughs> So um, he does a lot of uh, unethical things. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I can understand that. That's a challenge. Yeah, okay. it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. When um, yeah, an ethical thing like uh, putting hidden camera, putting tracking device in your car, stuff like that. Oh. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, that's uh, that that feel. I can imagine that feels invasive. Yes, it does. <laughs> That's why I'm not at home right now. I'm actually at my sister's house. Um, but good thing the court ordered him to move out. Oh, good. So he's out of the house. Um, still feel kind of not very secure. Um, but, you changed um, all the locks. Mm-hmm. You changed all the locks and that you have a security system in your house? Yes, I got. I bought some security camera right now. Um since I'm not home, I can watch it and uh, it will notify me if something going on. Yeah, of course. Um, that's basically where I am. So we'll see how long this bow ends because it just, it depends if some, if you dealing with somebody who's not cooperating with you or want to work with you, it, it, it's got to drag longer. It makes the financial situation harder because yes, you have to does. hire a lawyer. Yep. And then the court makers getting a uh, app where we talk through an app. You got to pay for that. And then uh-huh. you also have to pay for a child evaluator, a psychiatrist yep. Yep. for order. Yep. And then you got to pay too. for an amicable, amicable attorney. We had to uh-huh. pay for that. It's just court order. So it's just financially, it's just a lot. Yeah, yeah no, a it, lot. no, I know. That's the problem mm-hmm. with that. When you have somebody on the other side who's not cooperative, it does increase the expenses and costs. Mm-hmm. And um uh, it does drag things out, and right when it gets court ordered, you don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand. I understand um, very much the, the, an adversary who's uncooperative. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, that, that's uh, unfortunately more common than not when you're going through a separation um, from a significant other. Um, there's always feelings involved. So sometimes mm -hmm. those feelings get in the way of good decision making. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, you know, as long as you try to not the most important thing is not getting sucked into it and right. try to limit your financial exposure by trying to be cooperative with the mm -hmm. ultimate goal of resolving the issue in order to not have to continue and perpetuate, you know, that financial drain. But I, I understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. She, so. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a lot right now. So that's where all the finance going right that's now. That's where you're getting consumed. That's where all your money's going right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, that, again, that does ha that is common in divorce. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's what happens in divorce. We deal with a lot of clients who uh, post-divorce now have a lot of debt because everything went on credit cards uh, to pay for everything, including mm -hmm. their attorney's fees. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very common position, not a, not a good feeling, but it's mm -hmm. a common position. It can be resolved later. So try not to let it overly stress you out, but mm -hmm. use it as an opportunity to limit your exposure, trying to keep in mind what the ultimate goal is. Your ultimate mm -hmm. goal is to resolve this issue so that you can move on and you want to limit your exposure. That doesn't mean give everything up just to mm -hmm. give in. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you do have to fight for what you believe in, of course. And what's mm -hmm. in the best interest of your child. And uh, I have no doubt that, that that's at the forefront of your thought process, too. But mm -hmm. sometimes you have a very uncooperative person um, causing, uh, you know, tremendous financial strain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, if any woman going through fire that who is in their 20 and single, I wouldn't tell them choose wisely. Whoever yeah, you oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm on the same page with you. Choose yeah. wisely. It's no not doubt. only <laughs> affect your emotional and finance. It just it just takes so much a toll of you, you know. It does. It does. It takes time. Truthfully, you know, in in um, it it's very hard sometimes to really. So somebody gave me some very good advice, and I and I think this is excellent to live by. Don't marry or get involved with somebody you don't want to be divorced from. Ah, huh, interesting. Interesting you know, thought, that right? Uh -huh. and, yes. Right. Yes. It makes you think about it a little bit. So is this somebody mm -hmm. that we could resolve? Like if we had a conflict, could I resolve this amicably with this person? And if the answer is no, this person's going to like try to rip my throat out, you know, not right. physically, but <laughs> literally, um, so, or figuratively. But if that, if that's the case, then maybe that's not a great choice, but it's really something to think about. Mm hmm. Definitely. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you, I'm sure you'll make better decisions for yourself as you go on. Mm -hmm. Now you have a child, so mm -hmm. you have to make different decisions. Right. And one of the things mm -hmm. that, you know, you want to keep in mind also as life progresses is, you know, your priority financially is your child. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll meet people who have priorities that are children also. Um, mm -hmm. And that can super complicate things. So, Another good piece of advice when it comes to relationships and so, and even when it comes to finances, sometimes slow and steady wins the race. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I I definitely agree with that one. So, yeah. 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 Sometimes mm -hmm. it feels like you're you know in relationships it's not uncommon to want to get to the next level quickly. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I often also talk about is the financial piece of it, what's going on in that person's life and how do they manage their finances? You could really learn a lot about a person by talking to them about their finances, about mm -hmm. their credit. How are they a saver? Are they a spender? How do they manage things? You know, sometimes that's very telling about a personality. Now, like you said, it's not necessarily to be judgmental of somebody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just you're learning about their unique characteristics and you have to decide if those are characteristics that you feel comfortable with and you can live with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All this because I've been through this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of it. Do you uh, deal with a lot of couples where they have to have a prenup when they break up or anything like that? So the prenup is before they get married. A postnup mm -hmm. would be like when, when they're married. And usually that's um, for people who come into uh, relationships with assets. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we often or that the piece of advice that I give to clients is that if you have an asset 
you want to protect that asset. You own your home. So you want to make sure that you protect your asset should you go into a relationship with somebody. And that's the same with your bank accounts, your retirement accounts, your cash flow, your credit cards. There is no, not it's not necessary to combine everything when you're in a relationship with somebody. In fact, most often, it's actually in your best interest to keep things separate. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't have a joint bank account, but very often that it's, it works to your best interest. This way you keep your credit separate, that if mm -hmm. let's say the other person, something happens and their credit goes bad, you're now not connected that way so that it doesn't impact you. And, mm -hmm. and vice versa, if something happens to you, your significant other's credit is not impacted. So it's okay to buy houses separately and cars separately. You know, if you need the credit jointly in order to get the best rate, that's a, that's a different consideration. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a generalization, the considering keeping things separate financially is um, often advisable. Okay. Yeah, I thought that interesting because with Dave Ramsey, he often um, want you to put your finance together because you're working together. But, you know, so I, I appreciate the concept of working together. Mm -hmm. So um, and I don't disagree with the idea of having a joint account, mm -hmm. but should that web become very tangled to mm -hmm. un untangle it from a, you know, from a, if some things go wrong for whatever mm -hmm. reason, it makes it more complex to untangle it. So mm -hmm. it might be better to have certain types of accounts. So again, mm -hmm. when you're looking at advice, it's really important to understand how it relates to you and your personal information. So in some cases, yes, putting accounts together because you're working together makes sense. In other mm -hmm. cases, it makes more sense not to because maybe one of you has really bad credit and one of you or has a lot of debt. So mm -hmm. that may not be advisable to combine that, even though you're working together to achieve you know, a goal. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it makes sense to put it together. Right. So right. I think you need to look at the, you know, your individual circumstances and say, what is this? How does this how does this piece of advice work for me? What's mm -hmm. my comfort level and how would I be impacted if we put it together or we left it separately? Like I said, if you put everything together and let's say you, you had a car with your ex and the mm -hmm. car was in both of your names, but your ex drove it. He's mm -hmm. entitled to the car or she's entitled to the car just as much as you are. So mm -hmm. with that jointly, but, and let's say they're supposed to pay the, the car payment, but they don't pay the car payment. All of a sudden your credit is now going to be impacted. So if you had it separately and the car was either in your name or your significant other's name, then it wouldn't impact your credit. You have more yeah. control. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's why I, I say, you know, when you look at it, you have to take the, the, the one liner and kind of break it down a little bit. How does this, how does this work? What does this mean for me? And how would I be impacted one way or another financially? It, it, you know, personal finances and making those decisions require some thought and, and question and answer. So I always mm -hmm. tell people that, you know, you have to say, what, what does this mean? You know, what's the dynamic of the relationship? What are the finances? What are your credit scores? What are your goals? And is it really, you know, impactful to have things separate or together? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, I don't know you have to go, but I don't have any more questions. Um, okay. Well, if you think of anything else, um, you're certainly welcome to reach out to me. You have my name and Leslie Tain, T-A-Y-N-E. Mm -hmm. The book I wrote was Life and Debt. You're certainly welcome okay. to find that on Amazon. And... If there's anything else I could ever do for you, you have any other questions, please don't hesitate. Uh, I really wish you the very best of luck in life and, and the best of health. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you coming on and answering all my questions. Of it was course. really helpful. My pleasure. I'm glad it was helpful. You take thank care. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. You too. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>